next camping spot is at the Hina Hina Reserve. Now Hina Hina is around 35 kilometers from Papatowai. Now you'll need to have a look at my Catlin's part 2 blog and video to find out where Papatowai is and we're now on to part 3 of the Catlin's. Hina Hina is also located around about 5 kilometers from Oaka and uh, that is if you can cross the one lane bridge which incidentally has been closed so you need to go a few more kilometers around the long way and Hina Hina Reserve is situated right on the tidal estuary but they actually call it the Catlins Lake so it really isn't a lake it's a seven kilometer long tidal estuary now situated here used to be an old timber mill back in the 1800s and all that remains now is a couple of concrete foundations and an unassuming pile of rocks. Now those rocks were actually used as ballast on the old sailing boats when they used to load up with the timber. So situated here now is just a old and um, fairly dilapidated the Owaka or Owaka Yacht Club which was established in 1963 because the sign tells me so. So you can camp here self-contained vehicles only and it's for a gold coin donation. So it's a bit of a win-win and a bit of a base to us, for us to explore this area of the Catlins. I can't believe it is only just over a five kilometre drive from our camping spot at Hina Hina and uh, you get to Jack's Bay. Oh, it's just beautiful. We're here fairly early in the morning and it is just glorious. Just a handful of cribs, because that's what they call them in Southland, is cribs. And um, what a holiday spot to come to. Just beautiful. And the only one's here on the beach. Down the far end of the beautiful Jack's Bay, you will find the track to Jack's Blowhole. So it says it's a 20 minute walk in, uh, beautiful day, but I'm just not too sure whether that's going to be conducive to a performing blowhole. But it is an outgoing tide too, so maybe we might get a little bit of a performance from Jack's Blowhole. So we've reached Jack's blowhole, not sure who Jack was, but must have been somebody pretty important. Took us exactly 20 minutes to the dot, just about, from the car park. Um, just amazing that it's 200 metres from the sea, and it is very deep. So it's a bit of a catch-22 situation really, either you do the walk and get spectacular views on a beautiful day, and the blowhole's not performing or you pick a really crappy day and you get a good blowhole performing but either way high tide that's why we left the caravan early this morning and um, made our way here but the day's just too calm and beautiful really for it to be performing at its best but oh my god what beautiful views we got so we've taken a drive out to Cannibal Bay now how did it get its name you may be wondering. Pretty self-explanatory really. Early surveyor came through and found some human remains and although it cannot be confirmed, it, it, it definitely had a reputation for cannibalism in the area. So hence Cannibal Bay. But what a beautiful spot, apart from the name. 
So uh, we're going to walk across the headland behind me to Surat Bay and uh, mental note to oneself keep a look out for the sea lions that like to sleep in the dunes that we're going to be walking over. Don't want to accidentally step on one of those. Half an hour just about to the dot we've made it across the headland and we are now at Surat Bay. Now Surat was named after the shipwreck the Surat ran aground and that was back in 1874 and I do hope I've got that year right I am only going off memory with what I've read so 1874 the Surat sunk so it's very notoriously dangerous for ships back in the day and hence the um, the building the erection of the Nugget Point Lighthouse which we're going to go and see in another couple of days but very treacherous water and I've just spotted a sea lion behind me coming, coming through the, the flax bushes. Scotty! spot for a tailgate lunch. What do you reckon Scotty? Hina Reserve. We've come to Nugget Point which is uh, just a few, few more kilometres up the road from Kaka Point and Nugget Point is where you'll find the lighthouse. So um, we're staying at a fellow NZMCA member's property and um, you will hear them referred to as POPs or Park Over Properties uh, where these members um, open up their properties to um, members of the club for us to come and stay and it's a beautiful spot right across the road from this and the perks of getting being an early riser you get to come and see the sunrise on the east coast of New Zealand and really it's pretty spectacular at the best of times or even at the worst of times actually and in the background is the lighthouse so um, plenty to investigate in the area and loads of history, even dating back to 1810. So um, when the early settlers came, a lot of them were whalers and sailors and that's what went on predominantly in this area. So loads of history as well.
So Nugget Point Lighthouse has been shining its beacon, beacon since 1870 and it was built out of local stone from the quarry that's sitting just above it here where I'm standing. So um, it was built because of the amount of shipwrecks that were going on in the area. It is actually quite a treacherous stretch and um, many lives have been lost in this stretch of coastline from here down to um, the bottom of the Catlins. So it's a beautiful day and um, quite a nice walk out to the lighthouse today.